conservative voices, shoot, just make that voices silenced on college campuses. Yeah, from protesters assaulting and swimmer Riley Gaines in San Francisco to University of Albany students hackling and doing a conga line to try and shut down a Turning Point USA event never ends. Joining us now, Turning Point USA senior field representative Amber Kleinka, who was at the event for Riley Gaines and Washington Examiner columnist Ian Howworth. Amber, I'm going to start with you first. Watching the video of this mob, shrieking, enraged mob, corner Riley Gaines was terrifying. Tell us about it. Absolutely. So I am used to this. I am from Northern California and I have been involved with multiple Turning Point USA events that have turned crazy and violent. Um, the event was ending and attendees were leaving the classroom and all of a sudden this violent mob came in and started rushing towards Riley. I was right next to Riley and my first instinct was we need to protect Riley. So I shoved back some of the, the protesters and we made sure to get Riley out of the classroom as fast as possible. You know, Ian, this is a national security threat. When we have college campuses or a communist camp that turn out all of these kids who don't believe in free speech and they believe the only way they deal with people who disagree with them is they shut them down or they make loud noises or bang drums or blow whistles so a conversation can't happen, that's the future of America. I think a lot of older people don't understand that what they believe in free speech, these younger people do not. Well, they certainly believe in their free speech. That's right. the problem. Is it's a very one-sided thing. That This is happening really across campuses. This is not a one-off. This happens almost every week because it's a very effective tactic. A lot of these colleges are afraid of these students, and so it's much easier to placate them, to virtue signal, and ultimately to shut down speech just to avoid the hassle, and so it creates a cycle. Well, and I want to, your tweets about what happened to you, and it wasn't University of Albany, it was SUNY Albany, so it was the State University of New York. So you can be thankful that those students were vaccinated because that's still mandated in the state of New York. So you're safe, I guess, from, well, nothing. Um, but your tweets on what happened to you at SUNY Albany were quite funny. You see the conga line, so they're, um, there's cultural appropriation of, as you wrote, Cuba, and they were eating the Turning Point USA pizza. So they were loving your, you, you are, you said you're of Jewish descent. They referred to you as a member of the KKK, but they love a slice of pizza. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. They think we're all a bunch of fascist Nazis who hate transgender people, but they just can't turn down free pizza. I think that just shows really the insanity of it. If we are as evil as they say we are, then surely our food just would turn to ash in their mouth. But pizza is just as delicious. I guess pizza can bring everyone together, even rabid socialists like these students. You know, Amber, how long was uh, was Riley stuck in, in, in the room and how long did it take for law enforcement to come and break up this mob and provide safety for her? Yeah, she was stuck in a uh, safe area for about three to four hours. Um, we wow. didn't get to meet up with Riley until after midnight. Um, it was a long evening after the event ended, waiting for her to get to safety. So why didn't, why didn't the cops come? Why didn't someone come and get rid of the mob and protect her? I thought that's what the police were for. That's what the police were for. Uh, University PD were able to escort her, but they were not dispersing the mob that was outside this uh, safe space. And... What I found out was that San Francisco Police Department were called in to disperse the crowd to get her to safety. But Ian, I, you know, watching this, I'm just glad um, Riley and everyone is safe, and, and you too, Ian. But I was watching that, and I'm like, you know what? It's because they are aggressive, and there's this asymmetric rage because just calling someone transphobic isn't enough. People, particularly women biological women are now saying, okay, I'm going to reclaim my gender. You know, I'm going to reclaim the fact that I can bake a baby inside and I am a giver of life. And I, I you know, because they try, they're trying to silence dissent, debate. Again, how many times have we heard the science is settled? No, it's not. 
Well, I think we've got to look at the transgender movement, especially the radical transgender movement, as what it is, which is the left's new religion. And when you see it through that lens, a lot of this behavior actually makes sense because you've got to prove your faith. And this is just all about proving your faith. And these students are um, some of the most dedicated among this faith. And uh, we really need to pump the brakes on this because once colleges truly go, that's where free speech starts for a lot of people and it won't end there. If you all reciprocated to a left wing speaker, you'd be called white supremacist and you'd be called racist and you'd be shamed. But these guys do this and they get no blowback. Amber and Ian, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Stay Thank safe you. out there. Good work.